Ms. Lorena Ruiz, economist, for her presentation on global textile fibers demand, trends, and forecast. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. The information I am going to present today comes from one of several reports we produce annually. The World Textile Fiber Demand Report provides a comprehensive analysis of world end use consumption of textile fibers, as well as information on cotton mill use and yarn and fabric trade. In this brief presentation, I will focus on three major issues, the global fiber market and the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, the world apparel trade market and consumer spending in two of the largest consumers market in the world. In 2020, the global textile fiber demand experienced an overall steep decrease of 5% caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the global economic downturn. The severe disruption experienced during the first six months of last year negatively impacted the demand for textile and apparel products. The decline occurred after 11 years of a continuous expansion and its magnitude was higher than the decline observed due to the financial crisis of 2008-2009. Not all fibers experienced the same drop. World cotton end use demand contracted to 23.9 million tons in 2020, which is the lowest level since 2013. World demand for synthetic fibers declined by 5%, making it the worst de decline since 1982, when it dropped by 6%. Global cellulose end use demand registered the deepest contraction at 10% which is the third highest contraction on record. You can see from the chart that global textile fiber demand is poised to recover in 2021. We are forecasting a total growth of 9% to reach a total of 10, 107 million tons, the highest level recorded till now. The annual world textile fiber consumption per capita decreased from 13.4 kilograms in 2019 to 12.6 kilograms in 2020. Nevertheless, a recovery is expected in 2021 and 2022, boosted by the increasing demand for textile fibers. For cotton, global consumption per capita has fluctuated between three and four kilograms between 1960 and 2020. For non-cotton fibers, world consumption per capita increased from 1.1 kilograms in 1960 to 10.2 kilograms in 2019, before it decreased to 9.6 kilograms in 2020. Global non-cotton fiber consumption per capita is currently 3.1 times greater than the corresponding level of cotton consumption. In 2021, world cotton consumption per capita is forecast to increase to 3.2 kilograms, while world per capita consumption of other fibers is expected to increase and reach a new record level of 10.4 kilograms. This slide is a good way of showing how the pandemic has affected the apparel market. As you know, in 2020, countries around the world took a variety of restrictive measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. These measures coupled with the lower consumer spending on discretionary and not essential products negatively affected international trading woods including apparel products. In 2020, global apparel exports decreased by 11%, totaling almost $420 billion, which is the worst performance, performance in eight years. In 2021, textile and apparel orders have increased substantially, boosted by the control of the pandemic, the recovery of the economy, the lifting of lockdown measures, 
and the increase of the demand for consumer goods. And this has happened in many of the world's largest consumer markets, including the United States, the European Union, and Japan. Here we're looking at the global polyester market. You all know that the main competing fiber for cotton or any other natural fiber is polyester. In 1990, polyester demand was about 9 million tons globally, and China's share was only 13%, equivalent to about 1 million tons. Looking at the period from 1990 to 2019, global polyester demand has increased remarkably to a record of 57.9 million tons. During this period, China's volume increased 38-fold to over 41 million tons in 2019, which is equal to 71% of the world total. So there is no doubt that polyester has gained significant share from all fibers, both man-made and natural. The demand for cellulosic fibers has shown a rapid growth in recent years, increasing from 2.7 million tons in 2008 to a new record of 6.3 million tons in 2019. The vast majority of cellulose fiber production are staple fibers, which account for 90% of the total. As with in polyester, cellulose fibers are mainly produced by China. The country accounts for 65% of the global production. China is followed by India with a 10% share. With this slide, I want to show two different things. The relative price of cotton to polyester, represented by the blue line. So when the line is above one, it means that cotton is more expensive than polyester. And when the line is below one, it means that cotton is cheaper than polyester. As you can see, since 2008, prices for polyester are significantly lower, making cotton less competitive in terms of prices. Just to give you an idea, between 1960 and 2021, cotton prices have been lower than polyester prices only 26 times. This slide also shows the change in market share for cotton, represented by the green bars. The analysis shows that 89% of the time when cotton prices were high, higher than polyester prices, the market share of cotton declined. And only 27% of the time when cotton was cheaper than polyester, the market share of cotton increased. It is worth mentioning that when we think about the challenges to cotton in the consumer market, we usually think that cotton's biggest challenges are other fibers, especially polyester. However, by looking at this slide, we can see how consumers in the US and the European Union spend their money. You can see that housing, food, transportation, and entertainment expenditures are the highest items in the consumer budget. In 2019, apparel and footwear sales were only 3% of each dollar spent in the US and 4.6% of each euro spent in the, in the European Union. As you can see, consumers are spending less money on apparel and footwear and spending more money on healthcare, housing, entertainment, and other products such as electronics. I would like to conclude my presentation by noting that fast fashion has been the predominant business model of the textile apparel industry since the beginning of the 1990s. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we look at the fashion industry. New environmental regulations and a growing consumer awareness of the environmental impact of the fashion industry are setting a new way forward. Governments and organizations are promoting a more sustainable fashion industry. This means that cotton promotion must continue in order to change consumers' preferences towards to a more sustainable fiber, like cotton. 
It also means that the cotton industry needs to do a better job highlighting the benefits and advantages of including cotton in the production of textiles and apparel products. Thank you very much for your attention.